What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us on any streaming platform here at the intersection of creativity and currency. And you know when we do this intro, we got a very special guest with us today. Today we have the CEO of Bands, Ramin Sitar. What's up, Ramin? What's up, fellas, man? I appreciate you guys having me here today. Uh, excited to be here and excited to have the discussion with you guys. For sure, man. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be real dope. Like what y'all are doing right now, you're about to change the game in terms of artists and when it comes to money. And we'll we'll mm-hmm. get into a lot of that um later on. But the fact that you went from like the tech space to the music space, like can you kind of give a quick background and how this all came how you got to this point? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I started out in the tech space for about 15 years, focusing on uh, revenue growth strategy uh, for a number of different tech startups. My last company led to an exit. And so after that exit, I moved down to Los Angeles and I wanted to get into music. So I uh, started my own management company um, because I wanted to learn more about how the financial side of music uh, was operating. When I got into the business, I was working with independent artists really focusing on helping them grow their careers and uh, helping them understand their finances. And that was kind of my core as we we, we started to uh, grow out the management company. This is perfect, man. This is actually really perfect because there's two sides of this that I want to touch on. You came from tech to music. You didn't just get indoctrinated into this as like a young, young man, which means you, ha- you came in with experience and a way the world does work when you came into music were you a little shocked the way things worked when you started looking at how the money moves and or just how the industry moves as a whole yeah i think great question you know i think from my perspective when i got into music one of the main things i was doing is i was buying and selling records um i was buying small mid-tier segment records and selling them and there is really where I learned how the financial side of music was and, and how it was built and how the money moved and how these different revenue streams um, essentially operate. So it was a little bit of a shock, you know, coming in and understanding that, you know, the business is such a big business. It's, you know, billions and billions of dollars a year. There are so many intricacies with the way that that money moves in the industry that, you know, money can get lost. You may not be able to find money. And so, yeah, it was a little bit, I would say, um, not really shocking, but it was eye-opening for me, uh, but also exciting. You know, like I, when I got into it, I was, I was, you know, excited because I knew that there was a lot of challenges and a lot of problems that could be solved. And coming from tech, I felt that, you know, no better way to solve some of these problems rather than through tech solutions. And so, um, yeah, I was, it was a little bit eye-opening and, you know, taken back a little bit, but also exciting because of the opportunity. What's the biggest difference between marketing a product and marketing an artist? Because you, you use the word exit. That means you were doing well in terms of helping grow, right? Your role that you were playing there. Uh, what's the difference? The product is the individual at the end of the day in the music space. Um, and so I think there is no huge difference other than the audience and the market of music being much smaller. So I think that's the biggest difference is like your audience, the smaller industry, things move faster, word of mouth moves faster. So in addition to the traditional marketing channels, the paid media marketing channels, you know, the organic growth within marketing, you know, I think that's the biggest difference. Got you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. And you know, it makes me think, right? Of course, bam, you blow something up. And then next thing you know, you're having a success. You you have legitimate fans. You can go on the road. Your, your, your music is taken off on all these platforms. And then we get to that point where you said, like, money. Where is the money? Because so many things happens and um, it's happening are happening at once, right? A regular product, you might find one channel and kill it on... Facebook ads, maybe a couple of others, but it's very clear where the money's coming from, right? But music, it's so many places and automa- and then it's broken down into other countries. You almost go global overnight. Like success makes you almost instantly global versus a lot of other products, even online products, right? We're still usually starting off um, like domestically per se. 
So, like you you mentioned, yo, it's hard to find the money, or it's a little bit more difficult. That's where you come in with a solution with bands. Can you tell me, like, why that was the solution that you decided to tackle? Um, out of everything you encountered in music, I think like just being in it real life, like you know, starting out in the mid tier segment, working with artists hand in hand, day to day, you know, at our management company, Seeing Sounds, I learned a lot. You know, the main thing that was evident was that all of these artists had the same problem. They didn't understand their finances. They needed help collecting uncollected royalties because they weren't registering their music properly, right? So those were two things that kind of stood out to me. And really it's like <clears throat> boots on the ground. I'm with the people that are living it day to day. I'm working with these artists hand in hand. And so understanding that was the core problem you know, that was essentially a part of my job to help solve it, right? It's like, hey, like, let's like keep track of all your money. Let's make sure you know where it's coming from. Let's make sure you know how much money you're making in the future, such that you can plan better. And also, let's make sure you're registering your works properly, so that you're collecting all the money that's owed to you. And that's really, I think, where a lot of my experience came from is just like, being with the people that had the problem. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're looking for a music distributor that cares about educating their artists so they can get in a better position, you should check out Two Loss because every single Monday, they have office hours where they bring on dope people in the industry to hop on calls, give artists insights on the future of the music industry and answer some of the questions they have going on in their personal careers. So if you aren't a user of Two Loss or just want to have a little bit more information about them, Go to Two Lost on Instagram. That's T O O L O S T, Two Lost on Instagram, and it'll take you to everything you need to see, inform you about the sessions and more. Back to this episode. Um, me and Sean had a conversation about just, you know, how the, the, the mindset of the artist can be changed and kind of impact what artists are looking at in the future, right? So, from our side, as marketers, views, likes, and comments are king. But for a long time, like we've been pushing to artists, like, you know, like the true KPI should be when a dollar hits your bank account. You know what I'm saying? Like that should be the, the main KPI you're looking at because all the other stuff can kind of build on top of that. And I know what's been hard for us is one, having clients that are, you know, their mind is in that area because, like I said, views, likes, comments are king. But then also, you know, having a, a, a place that aggregates all that data to where we could even from our side be able to accurately see how hey, we spent a thousand dollars on you. You know, your your one song went up 4% in, in valuation, so we can assume that if we put another whatever, this should keep growing and you can get the eggs here. Like, that's been something that, like, for years we've wanted to do, but because typically the payment data is so spread out. And like Sean said, I mean, there's, you know, at least as marketer, there's sometimes data like we can't even get. You know, like the distributor won't let it go or the publisher won't let it go. So, like, that was immediately where my brain went, was just like, oh, like, this could genuinely change marketing for the better because it could get to a position to where artists are now looking at their marketing KPIs in terms of money instead of kind of like the top line stuff in hopes that it translates to money. Historically, and even now, it's super hard to attribute to actual, you know, specific areas of growth in an artist's career or maybe even financial growth, right? I think where the industry is headed is there's solutions coming out for that to be able to help streamline it a little bit more so that you actually can understand the impact of your marketing campaigns. But I think most importantly, what it is, is as you grow your career, however you decide to grow it and however you have support to grow your career, you're right. Like what allows people to understand how you're doing is, you know, obviously streams, but it's like, how much money are you making off those streams? Right. It's like, the more, the more you stream, the more fans you have, the more money you're going to make, right? It's evident, right? So it's like also a part of the tool is like in a part of this ecosystem is for those that are the marketers out there, for those that are the labels out there, the distributors out there, they need a tool to be able to, um, how do I say this, run a risk analysis against the deals that they want to do. Right. So the, the business that they want to engage in. So it's like if you know an artist is making, you know, a certain amount of dollars 
off their streams or a certain amount of money, you understand the finances. You can make licensing decisions based off of that. You can make deal decisions off of that, you know, record deal decisions. There's all kinds of different things you could do based on that information. But it empowers you to know that, hey, if I'm going to put some money out there and I'm going to front this money, I'm going to advance this money because I believe in this individual and I want to help them grow their career, it also gives you that, that vision and that transparency into, okay, when am I going to get my money back? No, nah, that's huge, man. No, that's huge. And to me, you know, I think some people take something like this as, I don't know, artists doing like, I don't know, as if it's a, a weapon or some people might even look at this as like, yo, you might mess some things up. I think in one way, it's really just looking at it as, as artists being able to do regular good business. It's been hard for artists to do good business in the past. Um, and because typically your business if you're running it right, you have an understanding of what it looks like to bring sales in. You understand what your profit looks like. And if it's time to sell or do something like that, you can do regular modeling. But without having that information, it's all guesswork. But even when you have that information, it comes down to a couple of things. One, all right, do you want to stay in this business? That's going to determine what you negotiate. Two, what is somebody willing to offer you? We could say it's, it's worth this within the app, right? Or and that and that could be your real value. However, you still got to just you still have to base it on real things, and it could be worth more to me if I buy your stuff because what I have in terms of my resources than it is to you because I have ability to expand on the value of your catalog. So, like that's just that's what regular business is like. I think we're not. When we talk about this conversation, like artists having this type of information isn't something like that's unheard of in in other verticals, I would say, in other industries, I would say. 100%. Yeah, it's un, it's not unheard of. And I think um, our, my co-founder and CTO, Shiv Ansel, always says it right. He's like, if you're trying to run your business, you need to understand your finances. Plain and simple. That's, that's really kind of the core of it, right? It's like, all of these artists, if you're serious about what you're doing, if you're serious about being a musician and you want that as a career, then you have to understand your business side. You know, artists like Russ, you know, super successful. You go ask Russ anything about his finances, I guarantee you he's able to tell you anything about it. He's fully in tune with his money, right? You have to be. There are so many different ways you can grow, so many different ways you can invest in yourself, so many different ways you can partner with other companies, other businesses to grow your career. And all of it stems back to understanding your finances, right? So I think that's like a pretty important component for, you know, like you said, anything, any business, everybody should be their own CEO. Everybody should run their own business because at the end of the day, nobody's going to do it for you. And no one, and no one's going to do it better than you would do it because you care more, you know? And so like, the way I look at it is like, especially in the U.S., man, everybody's on their own. You know, sadly enough, like there are some good ecosystems out there and communities that help and support. And I think those are out there and it's evident in the music space, especially. But ultimately, it's on, it's on you. You know, and I think you have to be empowered to have these tools at your tool belt to be able to go do that. I would say like one of the biggest useful aspects and features of that, you know, has been supporting these artists, producers, writers, and engineers to be able to go get the money they're owed. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, I mean, I want to just end it here for, you know, artists that they want to use this tool, right? Getting clarity on your, on your money. I just do a quick summary again, as far as like, why do I care to see this now other than, oh, yeah, it's nice to see that there's some numbers and my money is floating. Like just actionably, what should I what does this information um, give me that I can put into action to improve an outcome in my career? Because I know there's more than one use case. Aggregating all of your all of your revenue streams in one place. So it's really easy to understand. You can pull it up on a mobile app. You can see it there real time. Right. And then also go get the money you're owed and let us make sure that everything else that you've registered is actually properly registered. Dope. Dope. Well, appreciate you hopping on, man. No, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you guys having me. For sure. Yeah, that's as well. Yo, everybody, this is Ramin Sitar. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. 
And this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary.